Okay, this is a quick video to show you the trade manager I've created. Um, it's an application that allows you to write strategies in Java and deploy them against interact interactive brokers, trader workstation. Um, if you go to this website, the code can be downloaded from this website. It's open source and free. Um, downloads you can either go to the link over here or you can go to the download tab um, I've also included a demo demo database this has data for 2013 for gapping stocks on a five minute basis and one minute basis uh, the wiki gives you installation instructions to and how to set it up in Eclipse um, Okay, let's have a quick look at the features of the application. I mainly trade gapping stocks and this is how I prepare for the day. I won't go through this but you can read this. Um, when I trade a gapping stock, a gapping stock is referred to any stock that opens at a price different to its closing price from the previous day usually due to earnings or guidance or some other relevant news event but these are the rules I use to decide which are the good ones and which are the bad ones and which direction I will trade them in. Okay back to trade manager. Implemented features um, here's a list of the features that the application covers we'll be going through these when we look at the application um, I've broken this video out actually into two videos, one that will demonstrate the features of the application and the second one that shows you how to cr create and implement a simple strategy. Here's a simple strategy that I created. Um, these are the sort of rules you can write. You can actually do anything because it's Java based. So, you know, anything you can do with the data, we can do. The application itself is the architecture. Um, starting at the top here, we have five tabs. It's a GUI application written in Swing. Um, there's five tabs that uh, allow you to configure, trade, and actually watch positions as they trade. And we'll go through those. Um, a controller that controls the UI and sends messages backwards and forwards to the interfaces over here. We have one to Yahoo Finance and one to Interactive brokers. This one's the only one that allows you to trade. Obviously you can't trade through uh, Yahoo Finance but you can get data. There are limitations to the data you can get. Um, we have a service manager here and this basically interfaces all the components within the application and down here we have uh, OR mapping, object relational mapping and we're using a MySQL database to store all the data. Have a quick look at the data structure. Um, main table main object in the data structure is a trade strategy and this trade strategy is identified by the contract you're trading the trading time frame so this could be a trading day multiple days or just periods within a day the strategy you're using to trade and the portfolio which is the account you're trading against and this can be multiple accounts um, or groupings of accounts um, a trade strategy can create trade orders and trade order fills. So you've got many trade orders and trade order fills. And obviously as a, once a trade order gets filled, then you have an open position. So here you have a position table for that contract. That's basically the database. Um, strategies, I'll let you read through this on your own. The second video goes into this into much more detail on how to set a strategy up and create code for it. Okay, now let's go and uh, look at the application itself. I'm going to start it up as I would start it up in the morning um, before I start trading. Um, the application will open and ask us to log in to trade a workstation. it is doing something it's actually starting here we go first thing it does is come up with the logon screen and uh, the 
details that are on here are actually in the configuration file. So let's have a quick look. Once you install the application, you'll have a, di a main directory and you should see the two build files, the bat file and the sh file, these are for Linux, and a configuration properties file. If I open up the properties file, um, whenever you add rows into the application or it comes to login, there's a lot of default values and I've put this all in the configuration file um, so you don't have to keep setting them every time uh, you add rows or change things. So for instance my trading day is always the NYSE so it's 930 to 1400. These are my login details um, for trader workstation so I don't have to keep typing those in. Um, default directories. If I add a new trade strategy here are the defaults. Um, you can also put in a stock at the end of here. So here I have IBM. So you can change that to be nothing if you don't want a default. But if you're always trading, you need minis or particular currency, you can put that symbol in plus the other pieces of information that are needed. Um, what else of interest here? Oh, you need to check your set, sorry, your local time zone up here for your PC. So that's your PC time zone, not your market time zone non-trading days we have here, default strategy and then default duration and default bar size. Uh, that's about all you need to know in here. There's also logging down here. You can change the log level from warnings to info if you need more information. So anyway, let's go back and log in. So we hit connect. First thing it does when it connects is it downloads your current account information. So you should see here this is for my paper trading account, the values. And this will update um, every so often. So this time frame will change every time TWS updates its information. This will update also. Now let's add some contracts. Um, as you can see, it's put in today's default um, at 9.30 to 6.30. You can change these values. I'm going to import some contracts. So what I do is I create my contracts in a CSV file and I'll show you that in a second and save those. Here's the format of that CSV file that I just imported. You can see it's quite simple. This is the same up to here I believe as the layout TWS uses to import contracts into TWS and then I've added some fields here like my biases buy these stocks. They're all bought. Some would be sold normally but today we only had gap us up and the date which is today. So if you were always say contract trading one symbol you would just enter you wouldn't need these values here at the end the last two values you would just enter this and put your particular contract in say it was an e-mini or currencies or a list of currencies and that way each day you can just import them and not have to set them up. Um, you can add them obviously if you right click on any of these panels you can do add and here it's going to add IBM and I could say you know well let's make it something else let's make it uh, Apple for instance and I want to trade that short today as it's been weak um, these values here are, have come from the configuration file so has this come from the configuration and so it was two days but you could change this and you can change these to any time period you want to trade on. I'll leave these as five minutes because that's what this uh, strategy does. Your risk amount, you don't, this is optional field. Any field that has a uh, star by it is mandatory. Actually this one should be optional because the only time this value is used is in your strategy. So. That's a bit of a mistake. You can hold your mouse over and you can see the highlighted portion over here tells you what the parameter is in the configuration file. You can sort by clicking any column headers. Um, if you click on a particular row, these values will light up. So you can, if you just wanted to run the strategy or cancel the strategy for one particular stock, you can just click on it and use this. If you use the toolbar up here, this runs, these actions run for all of these. So if I'm running run strategy, this will start running all of these strategies, for instance. If I want to get market data, this will get market data for all of these. Whereas if I just click one and do market data, you just get it for the single item. 
Um, so what I'm going to do is just bring in the market data and I'll click on that. I'll need to save as we've just added them. So save and now it will go off and it will bring in market data and start the market data running for these symbols. Normally you'd be running this green bar which is run strategy which gets the market data then starts the strategies up. Um, this one's greyed out because it's for running in test mode and obviously while we're still connected um, test mode's invalid. So let's have a look at the contract tab. Contract tab lists all the contracts you have in a tree form from the previous tab and if we select one it will bring up the data that we've imported and uh, every five seconds you'll see this update and the values will change here and here as new data comes in. If we had any orders they would show down here in this uh, panel and you can add orders here if you needed to. If you had a position open you can hit this button and it will close the position. So say you had a strategy running and you wanted to uh, close that strategy you could just do it from here and you can zoom in on the charts and you can write print them and zoom out and do lots of other features and mouse over will give you the values. Let's look at the portfolio. Portfolio tab gives you a detailed summary of all your trades for the year. All these columns are sortable so if I want to sort you can see all the losses, see all the games, if I redo the search. You can change the date ranges on here um, if you want to see different periods, this shows the whole year and it's summed by month here. Gives you batting and your sharp ratio here. Um, gives you details of what they are if you hold over the top of the columns. Um, you can search for a particular symbol. So say I wanted search. Let's look for IBM. I don't think I've traded that this year. but Oh yeah, tra IBM was traded once this year. Um, if we check this, it'll show you when it wasn't traded. So this one, if you notice, these have no orders or they were cancelled. So we never got into a position. Um, this ignore here is just for the sharp and batting average. So you can ignore, you know, smaller amounts if you want. That's basically the portfolio tab. You can double click on these symbols, for instance, and it will take you through to this contract tab and show you that particular trading day and the action that took place and here you can see all the orders you can see where we got in and where they cancelled etc etc configuration tab this is where you set up um, your strategies so again right click and add will add a new strategy once you have a strategy then you can add indicators you just right click add and select them and you can see the properties for a strategy if it has one an indicator sorry here we have indicates that you know it's a 14 no rolling um, this is a candle so it shows the S&P 500 etc and last and not least we have the strategies themselves and we'll go into those into more detail but here we have from the configuration we've got five here you can see over here those five strategies and if you select them you can see the code the comments and any methods that they may have uh, one other thing on the configuration tab we have other configuration tables so we've got your portfolio which is based your account table code types these are the detailed attributes for an indicator so you can dynamically set attributes up for indicators and an entry limit table um, this is just a fixed table where you can change the values for stop limit amounts on the price range of a stock. So if I'm trading a stock that's between 50 and 80 and I want to create a stop limit order, I'd give it 6 cents. I wouldn't want the bar to be more than 2%. Um, you can use percent of margin as well, which tells you, you know, how much um, mar maximum amount of margin you want to use. So that way you can use it in your strategy and rounding shares and rounding price above and below whole and half numbers. And that's it really for the features. Um, also the display, um, you can print pages, right click print